Hi, hello, good morning to a spontaneous uh, chatty get ready with me where I'm going to test out one of the new Dior Queens that was released for summer 2024. This is in the shade Pastel Glow and I think people have been going bonkers over this Queen because it is just such a cute little like spring summer color story, isn't it? It's pastel, it has different sort of tones to it um, and for me what's one of the biggest sell selling points is that is in the baked gelé formula which as you know is one of my favorites and uh, an item that we actually have talked already on my channel about uh, last week or the week before I can't remember we talked about the new Miss Dior perfume so this is the newest version of Miss Dior which was created um, by Francis Kyrkchian we've talked about uh, MFK and Francis Kyrkchian's scents quite a bit on my channel so I was very intrigued and I shared in my pet pairing I want to say for um, last week how excited I was that he has you know co contributed to a uh, new version of Miss Dior. I'm actually going to start doing my makeup and we can continue chatting. I'm going to take the Urban Decay primer potion to apply as my base. So I sprayed the perfume immediately the first time I saw it in store and then I couldn't really decide what I felt about it and then last Friday I had an absolutely glorious Friday last week because I took a day off and it was the most beautiful spring day outside. It was warm, it was sunny, it was actually the last... no, Saturday was also nice, but yeah, this past week has basically been back to winter, as you can also tell from my clothing. But anyway, I took the opportune moment to enjoy a day off because I needed it and I also wanted to enjoy the good weather. When you live in a country where there are like five nice days in the year, you really have to make full advantage of that. I'm going to take the Prada Reveal Foundation in the shade LN5. So we went to the city center again with my husband and um, my son and I popped into store again to spray again Miss Dior and make up my mind about it. And I sprayed it on and I continued smelling myself throughout the rest of the day and honestly I ended up quite liking it. I thought it has like a very like sweet seductiveness like the scent has a very like sweet seductiveness to it and I thought you know what I'm just going to get it at some point and I thought I would wait maybe for a sale for Mother's Day and ask my husband to get it for me because my first Miss Dior was a present uh, from him for Mother's Day but then then just as I was you know about to remove Miss Dior from my cart thinking you know I'm just going to wait it out I saw that they had all of a sudden these queens um, on the website. I bought these from Easy XL for my Duchess here and I had been looking already for quite some time whether these are on the um, retail st stores here because I was quite interested in Pastel Glow ever since I saw the release uh, photos, the promo photos. So I've been checking quite often for Pastel Glow and it just wasn't on. Then all of a sudden last Sunday it magically appeared on the website and not only that but it was 25, like they were having like a 25% off sale. So I thought you know now is my time to get both the perfume and the eyeshadow palette. So I bought both of them and I am very excited to try and make up my mind about both. I still think Miss Dior smells very like sweet, seductive and I quite enjoy it and yesterday even my husband commented that I smell very nice. Now the interesting thing is that I don't know that I can really smell myself. Sometimes if you spray a perfume you can really like smell yourself and you know that you're leaving a trail, the sillage as one might uh, say using the professional terms, but with some perfumes other people can smell you better than you can smell yourself. So I think this may be a case where I don't know that I can necessarily like distinctively say oh I'm wearing this perfume today but maybe other people can I'm very curious I'm going to take the Dior Skin Correct Concealer in the shade 1N speaking of concealer I decided to finally get the Chanel Sublimage because I've been using this one pretty much exclusively for the past half a year and it's not a product that's going to you know last forever and ever and ever and I you know, I still really love this and if I end up not loving as much the Chanel Sublimage, I will still repurchase this one. However, the problem with this product is that I believe it's also been reformulated and I'm not really sure what people have said about the reformulated version. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to risk it anyway, because if I buy a reformulated version of this concealer, I'm still buying a new product. I'm not buying the exact same product that I own now. I figured it's maybe better while I still have the Dior concealer 
to try something different and you know hopefully end up liking that Chanel Sublimage concealer because it was also ridiculously expensive it is uh, it comes in a tub which is already I'm not thrilled about that I think it makes a huge mess I, I'm actually com completely sure it makes a huge mess because Charlotte Holcroft has commented several times on how messy that product is but it looks so nice on Martina's under eyes from all of the descriptions that she's given and the way this looks under her eyes I thought hopefully this one works out so fingers crossed that I didn't waste 100 euros sticking with your I'm going to take the backstage powder in the shade 2N to set the Prada foundation and also to give it a little bit more depth because it is still a slightly you know off shade for my skin tone it's just on the border of being too light for me like visibly too light but with a little bit of powder I think I can salvage the situation I'm going to do my brows with the Too Faced Laminating Brow X but I think I'm just going to like cut that footage out because it's just super boring it's been a while since I've used my cream products and there is a specific reason why I want to use my cream products today and talk to you about a specific new release but first I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Sunkiss bronzer in the shade uh, 2 that is the medium shade so yesterday I saw that after teasing for a few days that something will be returning which didn't read already didn't sound very exciting um, Pat McGrath Labs is actually releasing new shades of the cream blushes so the color bombs that were released last year in the spring and I have to say I'm sort of like missing a big release from the brand this year they just didn't really do anything for the spring this year the past couple of years they've had pretty epic releases for springtime with like the bronzers and the blushes and highlighters and quads and this year since the beginning of the year there's there was a disappointing Valentine's Day release with the cardboard quad that had plain eyeshadows that cost 60 something euros and since then it's been radio silence and now finally she started posting inspo pictures or her team started posting inspo pictures and I thought oh something is coming just in time for a spring release and then we get this sort of like underwhelming not disappointing but like it's fine it's fine you know neither here nor there kind of release but I am going to take one of the uh, blush sticks so this is the shade Peach Lotus which is a gorgeous shade and I really love this formula uh, and I'm very happy she's releasing new shades because some of these were clearly missing in the lineup and in fact I'm considering picking up the nude shade because there is going to be a shade which there is some sort of a nude in the name which is the reason I was hooked on it because I've actually been thinking how I would like to have something a little bit more nude in this range because the two shades that I have while they're gorgeous are not necessarily the kind of shades that work with uh, all kinds of makeup looks and especially not during the winter so I thought okay great it's very nice that she's releasing a new shade there are a couple of other really like poppy shades which I'm sure are going to look absolutely fabulous on people of a darker skin tone or you know are just fun for the summer but it's like four new shades of the color bombs really that's it that's what we're getting for the spring and summer of 2024 that's really not very promising and not giving me lots of hope that there's going to be anything exciting happening when the new mothership releases I don't have any of Pat's like highlighter bombs so I'm just going to take the one from Victoria Beckham this is in the shade pearl and if I'm not mistaken, my sponge is the preferred way that I apply this product. So I just take a little bit like this. So I don't know what you guys think about this release. I'm guessing none of you are really thrilled about it. And like this whole like lack of releases, the uninspired releases is really confirming to me more and more that Pat has really left the chat when it comes to her brand. She's gone back to, you know, doing her thing on the runway, she's given the reins to somebody else and that was it. We had a good run and now we have to get used to the permanent change in the brand and the fact that Pat McGrath Labs will never be what they used to be. I mean, we've been talking about this for at least a year now, almost since the release of the palette, the Mothership palette for uh, last year. But you know, us humans, we like to like hold on to that glimmer of hope 
that maybe, just maybe, she was out and she'll be back. I don't think that's happening. All right, let's do some quick swatches of the Pastel Glow Queen from Dior now, so that we can continue on to doing a look. Oh, these feel so nice. They feel like this beautiful, lightweight baked jelly formula. Love them. And I wanted to just say a few words. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into here. I know that these are not going to be high shine, they're not going to be metallic, they're not going to be sparkly. So here are swatches of the first three shades. So we have this like whitish mint green type of shadow, then this peachy one, this really fun pop of lavender here, and then the two sort of like sandy and coppery shades. I know very well what I'm getting myself into when it comes to this formula and I'm not buying these eyeshadows because like I said they're going to be super impactful. Uh, I've kind of like gotten used to these types of formulas now being just very soft, very elegant, very lightweight on the lid. And what I love to do with those is use them as a base to put other sparkly things over top of them, like my liquid eyeshadows from Pat or Lisa or some of the toppers from a Pat McGrath Labs or uh, my Bobbi Brown palette, because I think the, the texture of these eyeshadows is so lightweight, so non-texturizing and so elegant that it can really take upon that layering quite well and create an ethereal look even if you're putting several types of like products over top of each other. So here is a close-up. As you can see, uh, they're quite light, although these two have a really decent amount of pigmentation. I'm actually quite happy with the pigment that uh, these are giving off. I didn't expect them to be more pigmented uh, than this. And I'm going to create a look around them, but I want to also warn you that I'm not going to stop at just these eyeshadows and I'm just going to do my thing and I'm going to layer things, which uh, I think irritates some people because I've received criticism that I always put some sort of like pet sparkle and hide whatever is underneath it. Listen babes, you do you and I do me. This is the way I like to do my makeup. I'm more than happy to show the makeup before I apply the sparkly eyeshadow, but I'm going to do makeup the way I like it because this is my channel. If you want to just see these eyeshadows in action and just that, I'm sure there are plenty of other creators out there who are going to give you that option. I'm giving you the option of how these eyeshadows are going to look combined with other products. Now for today's look I actually want to um, somehow incorporate this lavender shade because I think it's just so much fun. I think I'm going to start off with this one and apply it like close to my lashes as a bit of a liner to give a little bit of depth to the look. I would really love to use this sandy shade all over my lid because this is a very Mariam shade. And then I think maybe I want to put this one in my inner corners because I think it would be really fun. So for starters I'm going to go into the coppery shade. This is just such a beautiful, again, very Mariam eyeshadow because it has this delicious warm chocolate copper tone to it. These are some of my favorite eyeshadows. This is going to look absolutely beautiful also, smoked out uh, all over the lid. Beautiful textures, very easy to work with, just gorgeous. As easy as that. Actually, um, while I'm at it, I'm going to apply this also on my lower lashes because I don't think I'm going to make it more complicated than that. I'm just going to shove this coppery shade also here. Then clean off the brush on my microfiber cloth and just blend it out lightly. Then I'm going to take this somewhat fluffier brush and I'm going to go into the sandy eyeshadow and apply that all over my lid and blend it upwards. Oh, that is really pretty. I really like this. That is super pretty. I think this is a gorgeous release and this particular color combination is just so fun. And I've been really looking forward to trying the baked jelly formula from Dior because I have soft cashmere, but soft cashmere is a completely different type of formula. So that may, may be something very good to remark here that when you're buying Dior Queens, um, be aware that they're not all going to be in the same formula. So the 
a lot of their limited edition releases tend to be in the baked gelée formula, whereas the original line, including soft cashmere, they are baked, but they are not baked gelée. So that's a very important distinction to make. Not to say that the, the regular baked formula is bad, it's just different and it's a completely different experience. This is how the look is turning out so far. This is a beautiful shadow, but again, it's relatively sheer. I think you can build it up. I even think you could put glitter glue and apply a little bit more of that eyeshadow over top. In fact, you know what? For science, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take a little bit of the NYX glitter glue and I am going to apply a little bit of that in my inner corner because my right eye in particular has been such a bitch this past week. Nothing stays in my inner corner because it's been so incredibly watery. So I'm going to put that in my inner corner, but I'm also going to take it over the lid because I'm actually curious whether that will slightly amp up the sheen on that sandy shade if I have a little bit more of a base there. A tiny bit, I think it gives a little bit more shine but it's really not spectacularly different compared to without so don't expect a wow factor if you apply a glitter glue you're just going to give like a tiny bit maybe more body and like five percent more shine okay now i'm going to do something really fun hopefully i'm going to take the lavender shade on my pencil brush and i'm going to apply that in my inner corner because i think that's just really fun Oh, that's really fun indeed. I really like. I really like these sort of like lavendery shades. There is a shade like this in the um, Fleur Fantasia quad from Pat McGrath Labs, but like the one from Fleur Fantasia has more impact and it is a bit more of like a duochrome and it is just such a fabulous eyeshadow. This is also fabulous, but this is more like fairy lavender. I'm going to go back into the copper shade and just lightly reapply it so that it's slightly more visible because I think the sandy shade covered it quite a bit so you can't really see much from it anymore. I don't know whether this is going to work out but I'm going to take Lisa Eldridge Titania and I'm going to try to apply a very tiny bit of that over top of that sandy shade because I think the sparkles might work really well together but at the same time I need to be very careful because the um, Titania shade from Lisa Eldridge as you can see is quite much darker and I just want some of the flecks from this shade to be over top of the sandy shade from the Dior palette but without really making the one from Dior too dark which might be difficult because Titania is actually quite dark Titania is also like slightly greener in tone because it has that like antique gold look to it so I'm sort of like <laughs> messing up completely the tone of that sandy shade okay so perhaps my advice would be don't use Titania over top of the sandy eyeshadow from Dior because they are not exactly made for each other but you live you learn Let's do a little sparkle moment just to see how this turned out under artificial lighting. I actually quite like it under artificial lighting. I don't know about you, but I feel like it looks, it looks um, more, more cohesive when I shine an artificial light on it. I don't know, it's also very, very overcast outside. It's also really overcast outside, so that's not really helping the situation. Uh, for my lips, I chose the really fun Rouge Cinétique by Hermès. This is also one of their new limited edition uh, shades for the spring 2024. It's a beautiful uh, tomato red in their matte formula, but I have to say their matte formula, as you can see, still has quite a bit of luminosity to it. It wears quite comfortably, I have to say. Now, a few final words about the Pastel Glow Quint from Dior. I actually quite like it. I think this is a beautiful color combination. The textures are really really pretty. You can go in like quite a few different directions and you can create I think quite a variety of different looks even though you have um, only five eyeshadows and honestly perhaps except for this eyeshadow here or also maybe even this eyeshadow here. All of these would be beautiful like one and done eyeshadow moments. I've really come to appreciate a lot of these types of uh, formulas. This feels uh, similar to the Tom Ford like wet and dry formula but I think the Tom Ford wet and dry formula has 
more impact to it. This one feels even lighter and more ethereal, um, if that makes any sense to you. Anywho, I'm very curious what you thought about this uh, look. You Feel free to criticize me because we can all agree that Titania was the wrong choice to cover the sandy shade from Dior. Are you planning on purchasing one of the queens or do you, did you purchase both? Are you planning on getting any of the new color balm blushes from Pat McGrath Labs? I'm very curious. Let's have a nice little end of the week chat in my comment section. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!